everybody, this is Dr. Nigro with a physics fundamental screencast as part of my set on forces and motion. This screencast is going to look at angled forces and how we can use angled forces to draw free body force diagrams and then use those to find F net acceleration and then other variables for our particular problem. All right, so let's start with talking about what that means. All right, so if a force is applied at an angle, you must break that force into its x and y components and those components to your whoops, your free body force diagram so I don't have to spell that out then determine F net all right so if you have a force that's angled it's not as simple as just drawing your free body force diagram and looking to see what's equal and opposite we do have to break that particular vector into its x and y components and then put those into our diagram all right so for example let's say we had an angle or force sorry applied in an angle all right that angle is going to be our friend theta all right and we can split that resultant into two components, all right? This will be our resultant force. This is gonna be our X component, and this is gonna be our Y component, all right? Now, if we know the X and Y components, we can use Pythagorean's theorem, all right? So the resultant squared will be equal to the X component squared plus the Y component squared, but more often, we know the resultant in the angle and we use sine and cosine to find our two components. So remember, Fx is gonna be equal to that resultant value times the cosine of our angle. And Fy is gonna be equal to that resultant value times the sine of our angle. Once we have those values, we then draw the two components where they belong in our free body diagram. All right, so the best way to see that is to actually practice a couple. All right, so we're gonna start with this problem. All right, you pull a cart, which has a mass of 25 kilograms across a floor with a force of 250 newtons applied at an angle of 35 degrees above the horizontal. Assume there is no friction between the wheels of the cart and the ground. Ah, uh, the land of no friction. All right, so first we're gonna draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on the cart and write out our net force equations. All right, so before I can draw the free body diagram, I like to draw a picture of what's happening. All right, so here's my cart, and I'm pulling it at an angle that is 35 degrees above the horizontal, and I'm using 250 newtons of force as I pull it. All right, I can split that 250 newtons into x and y components all right and those x and y components are what need to go into my free body force diagram all right so from on that diagram i'm going to draw my free body force diagram all right so now i just use oops i'm going to slide over so i have more room a box to represent my cart all right now what do i know about this cart vertically all right i know it's got some force due to gravity all right, and because it's on the ground, there's going to be some normal force. All right, now I've drawn them as equal but opposite, but that's not the case here. All right, I do know that the cart is not moving vertically, so I need my forces to be equal and opposite. All right, but I can't just draw the normal force as equal and opposite because in addition to the normal force, I actually have the Y component of my applied force. So I need to have that and that normal force. So those two forces together, whoops, those two forces together need to equal that gravitational force. So you need to be careful when you have angled forces because you're going to have to add the components in the right spots. All right, so that's horizontal. Now, I mean, sorry, vertical. Now, horizontally, 
I have no friction, which means all I have acting horizontally is the X component of my force, all right? So for my net equations, I mean, my sorry, my F net equations, what I tend to do when I have forces like this, I first tend to define the motion, all right? So the motion is being pulled to the right. I'm a righty, so I tend to go with the right, all right? And so I'm going to make that my positive direction, all right? And then I split my F net formulas into motion that is perpendicular and motion that is parallel, all right? You can use X and Y, but it gets a little tricky when we get to inclined planes. So I tend to do parallel to the motion and perpendicular, all right? So if I want to look at my F net for forces that are parallel, to the motion that means forces in this case that are in the horizontal plane there's only one all right there's the x component of that applied force all right now if i want to think about forces that are perpendicular to my motion i've got my vertical forces and for those i've got a gravitational force i've got a normal force and i have the y component of my angled force all right so let's think about signs a little bit I'm going to have positive signs for my normal and my y component, and then a negative sign for gravity. So negative, positive, and positive. All right. And I'm going to have a positive sign for my horizontal force because it is to the right. All right. Now, if I think about F net parallel, it's going to have a positive sign because there's only one force that's informing it. For my vertical piece though, I actually know a little bit more. It's not moving vertically at all. So I know that F net must be zero for that. All right, now that comes in handy later if I wanna find Fn or Fy. All right, but it's always good to have that stuff. All right, do I know anything else? All right, well, I know my gravitational force. I have a 25 kilogram mass, so that's gonna be 250 newtons. All right, and then I can find FF and FY if I need to, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave it. All right, so let's go down and look at the question. All right, what is the net force acting on the cart? All right, well, if we look, we said that the net force vertically is zero, so we're not gonna worry about that. But we said that the net force parallel is gonna be equal to the X component of our applied force. So that I can calculate, so F net parallel is going to be equal to our resultant force times the cosine of our angle, which is going to be 250 newtons times the cosine of 35 degrees. All right, so if I multiply those two things together, I'm going to find the X component is 205 newtons. So that is our net force parallel to the motion, okay? If the cart started from rest, what is the velocity of the cart after five seconds? All right, so let's think about what I have. I have V initial, V final, acceleration, time, change in position. All right, so what do I know? We started from rest, so my initial velocity is zero. I'm asked for the final velocity and I have a time of five seconds. Well, I don't know displacement or acceleration, so I'm going to have to find one of those two things. I'm going to go for acceleration, all right, because you know what else I know? I know that F net is 205 newtons, and I know that the mass of the cart is 25 kilograms. And with that information and Newton's second law, I can find that acceleration and then go back, all right? So the acceleration is going to be equal to F net divided by the mass, all right? So 205 newtons divided by 25 kilograms gives me an acceleration value of 8.2 meters per second squared. So there's my acceleration. And now I'm gonna put that in with my velocity and time values, and I'm gonna find V final. It's equal to V initial plus the acceleration times time. So velocity is zero plus 8.2 meters per second squared times five seconds, all right? so my final velocity of the object is gonna be 41 meters per second. All right, so this is an excellent example of how you can start with some force information, use that to find the net force, to then find the acceleration, and then you can move into your velocity and position questions. So for example, the last question is, well then, 
how far did the cart go during this time? So what is the change in position? All right, so I know my initial velocity. I now know V final. I have an acceleration. I have time. I basically have everything I need. All right, so I'm going to use the simpler version. I'm going to say the change in position is equal to the average velocity times time. So for the average velocity, I have 41 meters per second plus zero divided by two times our five second time period. And I'm going to see that the cart moved 102.5 meters because of this unbalanced force during this five second time. All right. So let's try another one. All right, this one's going to be similar with one exception. We've got Barry. She's pushing a stroller that has a mass of 20 kilograms through the park with a force of 25 newtons, but applied at an angle below the horizontal. And again, we're going to ignore friction. We're going to find that at least until we get to the second part of our work with forces in motion, things are going to be pretty friction free. All right, so let's start just like we did before with a diagram. All right, so I can't draw a stroller, so I'm just going to draw a box. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to move it over so I have a little bit more room. All right, this time a force is being applied downward like this. All right, and the problem tells us that that force is 40 degrees below the horizontal. All right, so again, we're going to have an X component and a Y component to that force. Okay, so that's going to look similar to what we saw before, except the angle is slightly different. And once again, our motion we're going to define as to the right, which means it's going to be positive. All right, so now with that diagram, let's move on to our free body force diagram. All right, so our box to represent our stroller. All right, just like we saw before, horizontally, there's only one force acting on our stroller. It's the X component of our applied force. So we represent with FX with nothing to the left. If we had friction, that would show up on the left side, but we don't, so we're not gonna worry about it. Now, we're gonna look at those vertical forces. If you look, because we're applying our force at an angle downward, that means that the Y component is gonna be a negative value this time, which means instead of putting it above the box this time it's going to go down below so we're going to have the y component which will combine with our gravitational mass and together those have to equal the normal force so these two together have to be equal and opposite to that normal force all right so you can see that in this case the normal force is much larger than it was in our previous example where we were pulling up all right, and that kind of makes sense. If you pull up on something, it's you're not lifting it off the ground, but you are alleviating some of that necessary support. Whereas if you're pushing down on something, you're pushing it into the floor, all right, you're increasing the interaction between those particles. So the support force is going to go up, all right? So to write our net force, net force equations, if we start parallel to the motion, all we have is our X component, all right? And if we move to our perpendicular piece, all right, we're going to have our three forces again, our gravitational force, our Y component, and our normal force. The difference here is our signs. We're still negative for our gravitational force and positive for our normal force, but the sign of our Y component has switched, all right? Now, because there's no motion vertically, we know that that F net perpendicularly, at least, is zero, all right? For our F net horizontally or parallel, we're gonna have a positive value because we have a positive X component. All right, so the first question out of the gate is what is the acceleration of the stroller, all right? So I know that F net is equal to the X component. All right, I also know that F net is equal to the mass times the acceleration of our object, which in turn is equal to the X component, which is the resultant times the cosine of theta. So I can substitute these two things in for both sides of my equation, and then I can solve it for the acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be equal to the resultant times the cosine of our angle divided by the mass. Now, could we have found FX first? and then plugged it in? Sure. But, you know, I figured might as well just do it all together. All right, so our acceleration value is going to be equal to 25 newtons 
times the cosine of 40 degrees all over our mass of 20 kilograms. All right, so we plug that into our calculator and we find that our acceleration is a positive 0.96 meters per second squared. All right, so there's our acceleration. So the next question is a different one. We haven't looked at this one before. What is the normal force that is acting on that stroller? All right, so the place or the equation that we saw the normal force was our F net when we looked at our perpendicular forces where we had the gravitational force plus the Y component plus that normal force. All right, now I know because the object's not moving vertically that that net force is equal to zero. So I can plug zero in for F net. I also know that force due to gravity is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And that value is going to be negative because it is pointing down. I know that the Y component of our force is equal to the resultant times the sine of our angle. And similar to our gravitational force, I know that value is negative because of the way that that force vector is pointing. And then I have one unknown, which is going to be the normal force. All right, so I go back and I plug in, and I get a negative mass times acceleration. So that's going to be 200 newtons. All right, I take my 25 newtons and multiply that by the sine of 40. Put the sine as negative, and I get 16.1 newtons. And that's going to be plus our normal force. So I move my two numerical values to the other side, making them positive, add them together, and I find that my normal force is 216.1 newtons, all right, which is greater than the gravitational force and the Y component, all right? Okay, so just in conclusion, just so we're all clear about these angles, all right, if your theta is above the horizontal. All right, so if that is your situation, all right, it's going to look like this, all right, then your normal force will be less than your gravitational force. And what that means is your surface, nope, sorry, that's not how you spell it, provides, provides less support, all right? And again, it's almost like you're pulling up on the object a little bit. You're not actually moving it vertically per se, but you are disrupting some of the interaction between the two surfaces. So it feels to the object like it has less support from the surface because you are providing the support instead with that applied force, all right? If your theta value is below the horizontal. All right, so that's the last example that we just worked. All right, so in that case, the vector points downward. All right, then in this case, your normal force is greater than your gravitational force. All right, so that means that your surface provides more. Whoops, where am I going to go? Support. All right. And that's the same idea. If you're pushing down on something, all right, then, then the surface is the impact is going to be greater. It's going to feel it more. All right. So that means that your gravitation is getting added to by your, by your um, applied force. And so the support force to counteract it is going to have to provide further support so that your object doesn't sink through the ground and go to the center of the earth. All right. So these are just two examples of problems where the force being applied is applied at an angle. Obviously, there are many ways to ask these questions, but these are two pretty typical types of problems and typical questions and variables that you could be asked to find. Again, the key Draw a little diagram so you can see what's going on in terms of the components and then draw your free body force diagram. It will save you from mistakes, from putting those components in the wrong spots, I promise. Okay?